what is the interaction that you prefer as you're kind of sorting things out? You know, for me, it's like coming up with a plan together. Like we'll sit down and watch video or something and like, all right, this is it. Or this is what we're trying to accomplish, or this is what I want to do. And then you feel like the two of you are kind of in it together where it's right. like, all right, sweet. Like this is, we've identified like what we want to do. Now let's go figure out how to do it basically. And then you have someone that holds you accountable or that is in the fight with you or can kind of check you because you might think you're doing something, but you might not be. And you need someone to be like, all right, like, no, that's not it. Like, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. Like this is what we talked about. And they're there for you. And you know, that I feel like you make it through a season like that, or you have a teammate that you can, can bounce stuff off because like you were saying, like after games, like your teammates might know what happened. Like it might look a certain way to the 40, 50,000 people of that are course. in the stands, but it actually is like completely opposite. Like something, no really, doubt, something really messed up happened that led to this. And only the people that like play the game understand like what happened, or it might look like a really bad play or error or something to someone who's just sitting in the stands watching. Of course. But anybody that played knows like, man, like that was just really shitty luck. Man. That was a <laughs> shit. That ball yeah. took a bad bounce. Right. Like whatever. You were just yeah, in the yeah. wrong, you were just in the wrong yeah. place at the wrong time. It just happened to be, it just it happened, happened to be you, you today. But yeah, if anybody exactly. else was in that situation, it would have been, of met. course, but you were just, you know, you're just the poor guy that's going to have to, going to have to wear yeah. it, you know, and they don't understand that, but really nobody, nobody else might. Right. Or of course they know what it's like to, to put in work and see no results. Like just because you work hard, doesn't mean that anything good is going to happen. You know, you can put in all the work, but that doesn't guarantee your results at all. It just guarantees but if you, you have don't a chance. Put it, but if you don't put in the work, I can guarantee you, you'll suck. Right. That's, that's, at some that's point. the one guarantee. Hey, that's the one guarantee. Like if you don't work on it or you're sucking and you don't want to try and figure it out, like, you know, what's going to happen next because it's not no going to go well for you. But no doubt. If you put in the work, at least there's a chance, but it doesn't guarantee your results. And I think those might be the f- most frustrating times is when you put in a lot Oops. of the work and you see absolutely nothing. You're like, <laughs> great. Like we got All right, absolutely well, nowhere. Let's, let's change gears here before I let you go. Cause I know you, obviously you guys are on a crazy schedule. So again, thank you for uh, this insight and perspective is just so cool. I'm fascinated by it. I I'll make a quick segue fast and then I'll get to my last point. What I've enjoyed about baseball just learning it again, I played up until high school, stopped playing and did not play in high school. So I played as a kid, you know, casually. I've gotten into learning baseball, just being around my kids and coaching their rec teams and, you know, now watching them play travel and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I've gotten such an appreciation for the sport just from living and dying with every at bat and living and dying with your kid on the mound. And he's got runners on second and third. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Holy shit. Like, right. Like I've just, I've gained such a, such a unique perspective of the game. And we've talked a lot about the failures that come with the game, but we're also talking here with a guy who has been MVP first round draft pick. I mean, you've had a lot of successes at the same time. So Mm -hmm. you talk about putting in the work and it's hard when you don't have the success, but you've, now you're putting in all the work consistently and you when you're having that success, right? And you're on an MVP run, you're on an all-star level, you're batting 340. You know, when you're in one of those runs, let's talk about that mindset. You know, it, it's easy to work hard when you're struggling, right? It, mm-hmm. If I had a bad game and dropped a couple passes, you'd bet your ass 20 minutes before practice started, I'd be on the field and having somebody throw me balls. But if I caught 10 passes, would I still be out there in pre-practice? catching the same catching routine. So talk to me a little Mm -hmm. bit about when you're feeling it, you're rolling, you're having a great run, a great stretch of games. How do you contain, how do you continue that same approach? Because success to me is the greatest enemy of a Mm -hmm. player, right? Cause it, you, you lose the grind. It's easy to work hard when you suck. Talk, talk to me a little bit about when you're having success, what sort of approach you continue with. Yeah. I, I never wanted to get, complacent especially in baseball because i feel like it can you can go from like feeling locked in to like i'm never getting out again to the next day like picking up a bat and being like oh god like what just happened (laughs) or you you know and nothing happened like it's just a new day and you get the cage and you're like oh my god what happened (laughs) so crazy and i think i think that happens because like when you're doing your routine or you're doing like batting practice and you're and you're and you're going well 
like you start, you start at like point A, right. And you, maybe you're just like getting loose that day and you're just like, all right, you're not doing what you usually do, but you're just kind of getting loose. Maybe your body doesn't feel as good. So it takes you a little bit, a little bit longer. And that was fine that day. You got away with it. You're still playing good. And then that happens the next day. You're kind of getting loose and then the next day and the next day. And you wake up one day and you start at point A and then you're all the way over here and it took a week, but it was little by little. So you didn't really notice that anything was changing. Like you got a little lazy or you got a little complacent or like you just weren't feeling as good that day. And you started here and ended up here and it was a week's time and you didn't really know what happened. So for me, I always wanted to, when I was going really well, I would want to be really focused and not let that happen. And I would take less reps or less whatever, but be way more focused and diligent. Like you, I would know what I wanted to do or what I wanted to feel. And I would just make myself do it. Like maybe you're not going to take as much today because you don't feel as good for whatever reason. Like maybe we were playing 18 games in a row and it's been four city trip and it, your body's just spent because you've played every day, but really lock in and focus on like what you want to do and, and, and just be relentless in that because it can go so fast in, in, in baseball to where you can feel really good and feel really bad all at the same time. And I just wanted to like ride those, those streaks out for as long as possible. And I had a good understanding of what I wanted to do and what I was feeling at the time and how my body was working. Just made myself lock into that and, and really be focused on it. And, um, you know, once you get an understanding of like something small, that allows you to be like really successful, something small and very repeatable. 